Good morning, everyone. It's so great to see you, and we're ready to worship, and we're going to start off with a very peppy song every day. So let's stand and sing. <laughs> and yes, and uh, you may notice we don't have any percussion this morning, so, you know, clap hands. If anyone brought a cowbell yeah. with them, you know, just <laughs> chime right in, and uh, we'll go forward. So let's sing. Good morning again. Um, my name is Lynn Storms, and I am so grateful to be with you again. Uh, my last week as a worship leader, I was the worship leader for this month. Um, uh, first thing I wanted to just note that we are now almost halfway through 2022. Oh, no. did, did you all think about that this week? Um, and honestly, it has not been smooth sailing so far. <laughs> between war, economy, divisive political issues, I could go on. <laughs> but I wanted to encourage you um, to make sure you notice the good things. And um, th there are so many of them. And I, I have two examples just from this week. Uh, one was from myself. Um, I was at Lowe's, had some, some big bags of uh, soil that I was waiting to get. Um, they had called someone to load them into my car. And I was waiting with a happy face. I didn't look, you know, like I was upset about the long wait. And a man just was walking out and he just said, hey, do you want me to put those in your car? And I said, oh, someone's coming. And he said, 
you may be here a long time. Let me just do that. And so he just, he just did it. You know, I was, you know, so I was kind of blown away by that. I just thought that was so nice. And then a few days later, my mom, I was talking to them. It had been their 62nd anniversary and they were eating at their normal establishment and they were relaying that it was their 62nd anniversary to the, to the waitress. And lo and behold, the, there was a couple sitting near them that had heard them who had happened to be traveling through from Montana. Um, and when they went up to pay um, for their breakfast, the cashier said, your breakfast has been taken care of. And the people from Montana paid for it. So it's not just with people, with Phil people that are nice. <laughs> They're all over the place. So just, you know, make a note that, you know, there, we just have so much good in the world, so. Moving on, um, we have some announcements. Um, Bible School, still plugging that. That is just coming up quickly, July 18th. So sign up for that um, if you haven't already. Uh, we also have a youth uh, service project coming up. It's just a local uh, project that they're going to be working on from the church on July 10th. Uh, Carla Udell is kind of in charge of that. So if you have any questions about that, she would be the one to, to ask about that. And uh, Lon wanted you, everybody to know that he, the sermon, so the July sermon series, which actually would start next week, um, is called St. Paul to St. Paul, St. Paul to St. Paul, advice from our namesake. Uh, the texts are gonna be from uh, 1 Corinthians. Uh, you can check out the newsletter and it has the exact texts, uh, but it would be great to read ahead um, for that. Uh, we have a few extra people back there today. Um, they are traveling from Pennsylvania and um, we have a spokesperson Pastor, and I forgot to write his name, Pastor Rob. Uh, what? He's used to that. He's used to that. Okay. You want Excellent. Have you and then um, Josh Tomiak has an announcement. Uh, so come on, Josh. Good morning, everyone. I actually have two announcements. So <laughs> trying to make it quick here. But first, I wanted to circle back to the Scholastic Bowl trip. I don't know if you guys remember it, but way back in April, I came and asked, every, asked everyone for just a little bit of support. Um, and now it's been quite a while. It's been like uh, two months, because I was out with a concussion. And we went on a few trips after the Scholastic Bowl trip. So I haven't actually been in church to, to circle back to this. But we received so much support from the church. So it was really wonderful. And, and I really just want to say thank you and share a little bit about our trip very quickly here. Um, we went to Chicago to do this Scholastic Bowl um, tournament. It's like an academic tournament, you know, competing to answer these questions. But so we got to go on this trip. And um, the first day we were there, we got to just do some sightseeing. So here's a picture of us at the Roby House. Um, that's a house designed by Frank Lloyd Wright, a very famous architect. So that was super cool. We got to learn a lot. And then after that, we went, got to go to the Bean, which of course <laughs> the famous Chicago landmark. And right across from that, uh, across in Millennium Park is the Art Institute. So we got to see a lot of really cool paintings and that was just a really great sightseeing experience and like kind of seeing some of those paintings that we had been studying, you know. Um, and then the day after that, we started a competition. Uh, it was a really, really great event, uh, small school nationals. Um, through this organization called NAQT. So we got to play like 11 matches the first day. Um, and then the second day we, fi we finished with some playoffs because we made it in the first day. And we finished with a, um, I can't exactly remember our record, I think nine and four, if I'm, yeah. if I'm right, or, mm -hmm. or 11 and four maybe. Mm -hmm. yeah. And so we ended up finishing seventh in the tournament. Um, so we're very grateful for your support, um, and we had a great time, really great experience for the team, um, both in of itself and moving forward. And we even had a little bit of money left over for future tournaments. So just thank you so much, everyone. Uh, now the other announcement that I have um, is that just this Tuesday, this is very last minute, but I'm in this duo uh, with this violinist named Donovan from Richmond, 
and we're headed to Wales to perform at a festival there, um, leaving this this week. So he's swinging into town, just made plans last week um, to rehearse, and we thought we'd do a concert. So it's right here at the church on Tuesday at 7 p.m., and if you can make it, we'd love to have you. It'll be a lot of fun. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Josh, and I, I will be there. That's awesome, yeah. Um, I think right now we're ready for Lon to do praises and concerns. Well, we uh, do have a number of folks in our congregation that need our prayers, and there are a number of situations in the world that we are all mindful of. But this morning, I'd like to rise before you before we go to Lord in prayer and just thank God for some stuff. Uh, thank God for three little churches that uh, care enough about other people that they're willing to take part of their summer and go out and do the Lord's work. God bless you. Thank God. Uh, thank God for a pastor who uh, oftentimes name is unforgiven but preaches at three churches. And he's still willing to do that because he believes God's called him to do that. Uh, thank God for you and what you do here at this church and all the things that St. Paul means to this community and all the things that we can be. But thank God most of all that Jesus Christ is here, he's alive. Whether we go to Redbird Mission, whether we go to our workplace, whether we go to school, wherever he is, we are, he is. And we can be thankful that when we leave this place, we won't leave alone because the God we worship will be with us. Thank God, too, that you didn't eat all the snacks. You just don't know where they're hidden. <laughs> and you're forgiven for sleeping in our church because that happens quite regularly. <laughs> Let's stand and sing.
generation that seeks, seeks your face, O God of Jacob. God, let us be a generation that seeks, seeks your face, O pray with me. Hi God, boy do we need you. We're really struggling here. It seems every day a new situation arises dividing us. There's a war in Ukraine, school shootings almost daily, the battle of pro-life and pro-choice, LGBTQ people's roles in our church, and sadly so many more. Instead of bringing us together and seeking your love and guidance, we are fracturing farther and farther apart. This must make you so sad. As I stand in this room, I'm so thankful to feel love. Your love for us, even though we don't deserve it. Our love for you and our love for each other. Please let this be a welcoming refuge to anyone seeking a deeper relationship with you. Let our hearts be open and our arms welcoming and guide us to be known as a church, not the building, but the people who stand ready to do your will in peace and love. Open our eyes and let us see things through your eyes. We know all we all must unite with you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on up, kiddos. This is the best time in the whole service. It's M and M time. No, no. Well, Miss Terry is with her mom this weekend. She's being a Baptist, but we're going to forgive her, right? Yeah, yeah. So um, I'm not as creative as Terry, but uh, I thought I'd bring you a, one of my favorite pictures. Do you know who that is? No, I know it's me, but who's the other one? Sammy. Sammy. That's right, my dog, Sammy. Do you guys have pets at your house? Do you have pets? What kind of pets do you have? Goats. That's a different kind of pet, isn't it? I've never had a goat, but I've had a lot of dogs. Probably not as good as this dog right here. He's the best dog. But I usually get my dog, they're called rescue dogs. Do you know what a rescue dog is? He's a dog um, that has um, a pretty hard life to begin with. And then uh, sometimes people can't take care of them or they're not able to and they take them to the Humane Society so other people can adopt them and we kind of rescue them. But they have a pretty tough life in the uh, Humane Society. They're locked up in cages, and I don't think they get out to walk around very much. And They have a pretty sad life. But then one day, somebody like me comes along, or maybe you comes along, and pays a fee. It used to be about $5. Now it's about $65 if they're chipped, microchipped. And they open up the door to the cage, and the dog jumps out. Or maybe it's a kitty. She jumps out. And they can't believe how free they are. Well, boy, I'll tell you what, it's a pain about the first week because they jump on you and they jump on the furniture. They go to the potty in the wrong places, like in the house. And sometimes if it's a cat, they climb up the curtains and they scratch the furniture. Well, they're free, aren't they? And they're just so happy they're free, they just don't know what to do. They're all full of themselves. And we have to teach them how to behave so they can live in the family with us. You know, we Christians are kind of like that, too. We've all been set free, set free by Jesus. But sometimes we can take our liberty for granted, and we think liberty or freedom just means I can do anything I want to. You can't jump on the furniture, right? Still can't do that. Our scripture text today that we're going to talk to the big, what does Terry say, the big kids? The big kids, we're going to talk about what freedom means and how we're free in Christ and what God wants us to do with our freedom. So the next time you see uh, your pet, give them a pat on the head because I know that they probably love you because you take care of them and everything. And um, everything we have to pay was worth getting them out of prison, and that's what Jesus said. Everything he had to pay to free us from our sin was worth it, and he's willing to work with us all of our lives. 
to make us behave the way we're supposed to. That's pretty cool, right? I think so too. By the way, my dog's prettier than your dog. <laughs> Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for these young people. Thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit, which already is working in their life. God bless their parents, their grandparents, their teachers, to help them come to a point in their life where they can receive you as their Lord and Savior. We ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. All right, kiddo, I had strict instructions for Miss Terry. And she said that you guys could have as many as you wanted. Oh, brother. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. In light of my daughter's sermonette <laughs> and um, Lori's prayer, I'd like to read the scripture from Galatians this morning. Galatians 5, verse 1, and verses 13 to 25. So Christ has truly set us free. Now make sure you stay free and don't get tied up again in slavery to the law. For you have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. For the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself, but if you are always biting and devouring one another, watch out. Beware of destroying one another. So I say, let the Holy Spirit guide your lives. Then you won't be doing what your sinful nature craves. The sinful nature wants to do evil, which is just the opposite of what the Spirit wants. And the Spirit gives us desires that are the opposite of what the sinful nature desires. These two forces are constantly fighting each other. So you are not free to carry out your good intentions. But when you are directed by the Spirit, you are not under obligation other than the law of Moses. When you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambition, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the Holy Spirit produces this kind of fruit in our lives. Joy, love, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, thoughtfulness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against these things. Those who belong, belong to Christ Jesus have nailed the passions and desires of their sinful nature to his cross and crucified them there. Since we are living by the Spirit, let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. This be the word of God. Thanks be to God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Excuse me, son. Yeah? What have you got there? Got, got some birds, some wild birds. Really? Yeah. Where'd you get them? Got them in the field over there. There's a field with wild birds. Huh. Yeah. Well, if you don't mind my asking, what are you going to do with them? I want to play games with them. Games? Yeah, I can play games with wild birds, yeah. 
What kind of games? Um, sometimes I like to poke a stick in there, you know, and they'll be like, going, gah, 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 like that, you know? And then sometimes I like to rattle up the cage, and they think it's an earthquake, and they love that. What happens to them after you're done playing games with them? Mm, usually I feed them to my cat. You know, my cat likes wild birds. I'll tell you what. I am fond of wild birds. You are? Yeah. Let me buy them from you. You want to buy my wild birds? Yeah. They're no good for nothing. They can't do no tricks or nothing. And when you open this gate, they're just going to fly away. How much? You're serious? I'm very serious. Five dollars. All right. Ten dollars. Okay. Twenty dollars. They're wild birds. They're exotic birds. You found them in a field. An exotic field. All right, that's all I got. I see you looking at the cage. Yeah. What do you got in there? You know what's in there. Mankind. Found them in the garden. The funny thing is, they put themselves in that cage. I had nothing to do with it. So what's your plans with them? I'm gonna play games with them. Games? What kind of games? All kinds of games. I'm gonna put games into their life that they think is gonna bring them so much pleasure. Then I'm gonna turn the world upside down. I'm gonna make right seem wrong and wrong seem right. And then? They'll be damned for all eternity. My father and I, we're very fond of mankind. I know. We want them to have access to us. So, I'm going to pay for their freedom. You want these humans? Yeah. You know they promised you everything before. They're going to turn their backs on you. Some will, and some won't. You're serious. Oh, I'm very serious. It'll cost you your tears. I know. Your blood. Yeah. It'll cost you your life. I know. You're willing to give your life. I'm willing to give what it takes. This reminds us about what Jesus did for us on the cross. He picked up that wooden cross and carried it to Mount Calvary because he loved you and me. Well, that's a pretty moving video, isn't it? I want to talk to you this morning about salvation. We don't talk a lot about that as United Methodist, unfortunately. Sometimes we dress it up and we call it justification. Just as if I had never sinned. And we all celebrate the fact that because Jesus died on the cross and was willing to give it all, we are now free. But free from what? Free for what? We live in chaotic times. Lori in her prayer did a good job cataloging ways that we see the disintegration of our society in so many ways. And some of us who have a few years on us Remember when life was a whole lot simpler than it seems to be right now. And we cry out to God to change things. And we wonder why God doesn't do something. And then we come to church. And oftentimes, the same division 
that we see in the world, we see right here, instead of us changing the world, in so many ways the world has changed us. And we wonder why it is that if we are set free, why we're living in such bondage to all these negative things going on. Our understanding of salvation is greatly influenced by the Apostle Paul. And we have grasped on to some of Paul's understanding of salvation, and at the same time we've let go of some of it. In the book of Galatians, Paul is addressing a church who has received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and yet they still feel like they have to live according to the law. It's easier, more natural for them to do what they do because they have to instead of what Jesus really set them free to be. And in this text, he's encouraging these Christians to remember that when Christ set us free, he set us free for a purpose. He didn't set me free for my own well-being. He didn't set me free so I could only so I could go to heaven someday. He set me free so I could in the words of the text serve each other. And the catalog of sins that he wrote down certainly a great list and he didn't have to add the words and other sins like these it was a pretty extensive list. When you really boil them down, it's quite interesting that they are all examples of when my own passions within my, what he calls the flesh, direct my life. When we hear flesh in our society, we think of immorality or pornography. That's not the way Paul is using flesh. Flesh is self-indulgence. It can be gluttony, it can be hedonism, it can be a thousand different things. When I become the center of my existence, for Paul, that's being run by or guided by the flesh. And so every decision that I make in my life comes down to what's in it for me. Someone has quipped about Shakespeare's statement that all the world is a stage and we're all actors and said, well, the problem is we all think we've got the starring role. See? And so everybody in my life is a bit actor, a supporting role. And I run my life based on what is easiest or what is best for me. In a way... I'm like the birds in the video who have been set free to live for God and I've decided to crawl back into the cage again. And the thing that rules me is this self-aggrandizement. But now that we're free from that, and we realize that God not only saved me from the devil and saved me from sin, God saved me from myself. Because given my own way and doing my own thing leads to spiritual death. <coughs> Excuse me. But now I'm free to live the way God wants me to live. It, it amazes me sometimes, and the pastor will agree with me, sometimes you come together on a worship service and the songs and the prayers and even someone standing up and giving a testimony fits right into the text. We've heard how a couple from Montana, I don't know them from Adam and Eve, paid for someone's lunch in a city they didn't even know. I want to suggest to you that's an example of being led by the Spirit, right? 
And then, Lynn, you gave me another example. Oh, the man, the man at Lowe's, right? He could have walked right by Lynn. He probably was wondering where her husband was. Why in the world that lady have to carry all that play? <laughs> Had to get that in, Keith, I'm sorry. <laughs> I want to suggest to you that that man was living by the Spirit. But what I don't want you, what I want, want you to get and not miss is this. What kind of feeling do you think that couple felt when they got back into their car and drove away knowing that they paid for a meal for someone they'll never see again? What do you think was going on in their heart? Love, joy, excitement, peace, amen. And about the man, other than feeling angry at Lynn's husband for not being there, what was going on in his heart? Love, joy, peace. See, we, God invites us to be humble servants of other people. And we think, oh gosh, that's another terrible thing we've got to do to, to earn God's love and God's help. No! It's an open door to participate in the divine life of God. Can, can you grasp that, church? He... God is calling us back into union with Himself through the Holy Spirit to be what God has created us to be. And it's not about making life harder. It's about opening us up to what life is supposed to be. Oh, my brothers and sisters, give us clean hands. Give us pure hearts. Why? Because that's the only way God's going to love you? No! God loved you when you were dirt. Sorry, Pastor. But God loved you so much. He didn't only want to save you so you could go to heaven. He wanted to save you so heaven could be in you. Now, Paul's suggesting that the problems in our world can be traced down to not that list of bad things. They're only a result of the true problem. The problem is that heart. That heart. The heart of humanity. And I guess the question that we need to do with this text or we need to think about with this test how do I how do I deal with that list now I, I'm not going to ask you to admit anything <coughs> and, and I'm not going to admit too much okay but you know that hit list I may not be guilty of some of those things but jealousy and envy and strife and division Oh, I get caught up in that all the time. And Paul, quite frankly, says, if you lead that sort of life, what? You won't gain the kingdom of heaven. Well, then I guess I'm in trouble because I find myself on that list. Not everything, but a few things. But see, I don't think that's what the deal is. Because the problem that God has with us is not those behaviors. The problem is the heart that produces those behaviors. And Jesus Christ came and His Spirit was sent so that our heart could be changed. And our life would not produce those things, but we would go down to the second list. We would be the couple from Montana. We would be the man in Lowe's parking lot. I'm so glad you said those things. You gave me a sermon. And our heart would produce things, not because we have to, but because of who we are now. God's children. Oh, my friends. Don't sell Christ short. He didn't just buy us to let us out of a cage. He saved us and set us free 
so that he, we could discover who we could be with him. And the best way to use those lists is this. If you look at that list and you see things in your life that your heart is producing and they're not on the right list, fall on your knees and ask God to change your heart. It's more than I don't drink and I don't chew and I don't dance with girls that do. See? It's the heart that God gives us. And the amazing thing is when God changes our hearts, all of our behaviors will change and we'll find joy in doing what God has asked us to do. Why? Because we've been created to be just that way. If you're here today and you wish you were a part of the other list, can I give you good news? It just waits it's just waiting for Jesus to call your name. Sammy, uh, my dog, has been a rounder since he was born, at least since I've had him. The first time I brought him home, my wife and I and my mother-in-law chased him around town for an hour because someone left the door open. He, uh, he never comes. He never does what he's supposed to, and... Since I've had him, I have to have him on a leash everywhere I go. I mean, I can't trust him across the room. If he's laying on the couch and I call him, he just looks at me like he's a cat. You know, what? The other day I was walking him and it was hot. And I was out here at the community college. And his harness apparently had gotten loose. And I'm walking across the field trying to get back to the car. And I notice Sammy's not with me. And I looked down, and at the end of my leash is an empty harness. And I thought, oh, my God. And I turned around, and I looked. And 200 yards out in center field is Sammy sitting there looking at me. <laughs> and I thought, okay, now what am I going to do? Because there's open parts. You know where the gates are open there? And I thought, now he knows where every one of those are, are there. And if I start calling him, he's going to go the other way. And he was just standing looking at me. And so I thought, okay, God, you help me. And I said, Sammy, come here. And you know that little turkey ran for me so fast, right straight, because he was lost. He was stuck in the middle of the field, and there was no harness on him. He didn't know what in the world to do. Oh, brothers and sisters, that I, that, that I could be so sensitive to God's Spirit that when I realized I was separated from the very thing that keeps me safe, that I just freeze and say, Jesus, Jesus, help me. But I wouldn't have to stand there waiting for him to turn around and call me. Because you see, he called me to, from freedom for freedom for a long, long time ago. And he's always there to welcome us back because he wants and more than anything to give you joy in your life. That's why Paul, at the end of this text, says, so let us follow the Spirit's leading in every part of our lives. Brothers and sisters, God has more in store for us than rules to be broken or kept. God is not some grandfather sitting up there with a chalkboard counting off every time we make a mistake. God is a loving Heavenly Father who wants so much for you to share his life, not just in heaven, but each and every day that you live. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.
The early Methodist would meet, and as they met, they would be asked, how goes it with your soul? Church, how goes it with our souls? Are we becoming more of what God wants us to be, or are we just still trying to get it by the best way we can? I look at the problems of the world, and you know, there's really nothing I can do to change the world. Not one thing. And I look at the problems that on a national level, and it would don't matter who I vote for, really. I'm not asking you to vote, I'm just saying. And you know, I even look at our community, and I'm just one person. I, I really can't do that much. And even the church, look at all these people. What could I do to change? But myself, I can change that with God's help. For those of you who are impaired with vision, I wore a special t-shirt today. Most of y'all have been to 
religious to comment on it because you thought it was sacrilegious. But my t-shirt says, if God can light up a bug's butt, just think what he might do with your life. God wants so much for us. Let's not be in slavery to the law. Let's live in grace and power and the very spirit of Pentecost. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Amen.